All right, you made it back. Right now we're getting ready to do some fun stuff. We are kind of fluffing up the area here in the sheep house. This is on the other paddock. It's time to switch them. This will be the first time any of the babies, the lambs, have uh, ever, ever ventured outside of that other pasture. And if you've never been here before, uh, we got a kind of a neat system on how we're able to move them from paddock to paddock. So I'm gonna get this uh, fluffed up for them in their other house here, and then we'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, I got that all spread out inside there. Now I'm gonna show you guys my master shepherd abilities. All right, let's go get these guys over here and show them their whole new world. Textbook. Appreciate it. All right, check out your new place. Thank you, Rambo. Good job, good job. I actually love when I switch the paddocks with the sheep. One thing we realized first off when we got to our off-grid homesteading life was that we needed a water pump. Uh, when we first got here, there was no building structures here to help with our rainwater harvesting and we really didn't have an idea of what that was going to look like either. Um, the only building that was here was the big green and white pole barn and then of course the log cabin. And just until recently when we started our rain catchment, we didn't even have gutters on those two buildings. So we've really come a long way with our rainwater catchment, uh, but at first we were pulling water out of the pond just to sustain our garden area. But every homestead or every house and every off-grid place should have a water pump. Hey, yeah, uh, you're probably thinking, why do I need a water pump? And one of the reasons why right off the bat we thought about having a water pump was what if we had a fire? Now they do have a rural fire service here, but it's gonna take them a while to get here. And if I'm able to throw a pump that can be powered via a generator, or in this case, its own motor, uh, into the pond, then I can move the water into a hose, and that could actually save my life, save the cabin, or at least ward off the fire until the actual fire department gets here. So if you guys have been following along on the root cellar build, you'll know that we've gotten water in there a couple times and we've had to pump some out. My buddy Greg had an old um, sub pump that he wasn't using that he brought up. That was an electric pump as well, uh, but it kept overheating and turning off and then it actually um, welded the prong for the pump outlet into the extension cord. So that went out the window as well. <laughs> But what I wanted to get was something that was compact that Stacy could move around if I wasn't here and something that had a good uh, amount of uh, pull to it that can really lift the water, get it out of the way, easy to use. Um, and this one here actually is a four stroke too, so it's a little motor, but you don't need um, uh, gas with oil in it. It actually has its own oil compartment. This is a little Honda um, pump and we're gonna fire it up today. It's brand new off the shelf. Put some gas in it and we're gonna see how much water it can move for us. So I couldn't think of a better place to start the trial than in the root cellar. <laughs> Cause there's water in there. So you're seeing the unboxing. This was on sale at our local farm and home. They only had two. Um, and the actually the price was cheaper by almost a hundred dollars than I found anywhere online. So it was actually a good, uh, good buy for us on the homestead. So this is, um, I guess, a Honda, a WX10T four-stroke um, little pump here. 
comes with your uh, owner's manuals, which nobody ever reads. <laughs> you have your um, cup at the end that just keeps all the rock and debris and leaves and whatever from going up into your motor and through your unit here. Comes with some adapters so you can hook everything up. Goes to the pump. You just grab this one uh, here. Put the uh, clamp on first. Get that good diamond in there. Clamp her down. So I've already screwed on the hose adapter. So then you just put your hose right on there for your discharge. Open up the top here. I've already filled it with petrol. Close that up. Choke. We have the speed uh, right here, tortoise of the hair. We like to probably go in the middle there. And then we'll give her some pulls. There is a little primer button that's kind of tucked away under here. there is putting out some pretty good hose pressure holy moly man that's pretty good 37 minutes I got the whole basement uh, sucked dry and that's uh, not too bad at all. Um, actually, I'm gonna take it over to the hydrant real quick and show you guys how fast it pumps out that hole. And Gotta call it at 2 minutes 21 seconds. Wow, so this thing's a little workhorse, huh? Just disconnected both the hoses. Has a drain out plug right here. You don't want to leave these things sitting around with water in them, especially in the winter time. You'll lose all your money right there. It'll crack that, uh, it'll crack that case. You want to make sure as soon as you're done so you don't forget where you drain that totally out. And don't ask me how I know that stuff. <laughs> Wow, this thing is pretty impressive. For such a small little package, this thing can really pump some water. So 
Um, just keep it drained out so it doesn't crack if you keep it over winter. Man, I love the fact that it's a four stroke too, so it's regular gas. You have an oil port here so you can just change your oil. I'm telling you what, we've been through a couple of pumps. I've been around pumps. Usually they're a little lot bigger, you know. But uh, for general use around the home or homestead or definitely off grid or something like that, you can't beat this thing. Whew. Well, one thing's for sure is we're the guinea pigs, so we like to test things out here at the homestead, share that information with you guys, and when we find the duds, we'll tell you about them, and when we find stuff that works good for us, we'll tell you about that as well. If you guys got any questions about anything in this video, make sure you drop that comment down below. As always, thanks for watching our videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Pristine, fine specimen. <laughs> That's majestic right there, folks. All right.